Steve, kicking things off with you, what drives markets so far? We've seen worries over the Federal Reserve and its upcoming uh, interest rate hikes, but that jobs number on Friday uh, certainly surprised people on the upside. Your thoughts on where we are with the macro story and how investors will react? Yeah, look, I, I, the headline was great, you know, up 400,000 rather than the down 200 plus that, that some folks were looking for, ourselves included. But but I don't think that's the story, Marie. I think the story there is the wage inflation number, which was now up 6% year over year, which is even still below the 7% price increases. Um, and, and that may be the appetizer for this week's CPI report. But I think that's the focus of the market. Because the question isn't whether or not the economy is okay right now. Of course it's okay. The, the bigger question is, is how hot is it as inflation? How persistent is it? And how many times is the Fed going to hike? A month and a half ago, when we were saying four hikes this year, we were ahead of the market. You know, now we're behind. The market's pricing in over five, and there's credible people calling for seven. So I, I really think it's the wage inflation number that, that that's the main course here, if you will. Yeah, I mean, we, we had on Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan, about a month ago, who said he's never seen this kind of pressure on wages and on people. First time he's seen this kind of pressure in his lifetime, actually. Brian Moynihan said the same thing at B Bank of America. So how is this playing out? I mean, you've got all this pressure to hire people, companies forced to raise wages, and yet the inflation number in terms of consumer goods is zapping some of that. From from people's, they're not even seeing their wage increase because they're having to spend more money on other things. Well, Maria, I think this is ultimately why the Fed changed their tune because you know they're seeing at least the risk of a wage price spiral where wages and prices are just chasing each other. You know, if you go back before the pandemic, we were at full employment, a 50-year low in unemployment before the pandemic, and that was before all of the stimulus and growth of five and a half percent last year and four this year. We've got roughly, you know, 1% of the labor force has left for retirement uh, as folks have accelerated their retirements given all the circumstances. It's just a labor shortage, and it's going to persist unless or until the Fed, you know, stops being so far behind the curve. They're going to do that, but, you know, it may be a painful process uh, over the next several quarters here. So what do you want to do? I mean, the Nasdaq down about 10 percent year to date, Steve. Obviously, investors have been selling growth, looking for value amidst these worries over the Federal Reserve's multiple rate hikes that we're expecting. Even Bitcoin uh, has lost some luster, although it surged over the weekend. Now at forty three thousand dollars, it is up, rising above the 50 day average for the first time since November. What are your thoughts on growth and in particular Bitcoin? Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin has acted alongside the growth stocks. They both topped back in November when paper was announced. They've struggled. They had a little bit of a rebound this last week. But we're not we're not interested in that in that rebound. We remain underweight growth. Look, growth stocks came into this year trading at 30 times. You haven't traded 30 times P.E. multiples on a forward basis since the great financial crisis. And if we're going to get five or six or seven hikes, you know, th those those multiples are under pressure. We think 2022 is going to be the revenge of the boring, if you will. Right. It's it's companies not that could have earnings tomorrow that are discounted at some low rate, but companies that have earnings today. So we find that in cyclicals right now because we think we'll see a little bit of a pickup in economic activity, you know, as Omicron subsides. And then we're starting to buy defensives, you know, the kind of boring, old, stodgy dividend payers. We think those are going to be the areas of the market that, that hold up best in a rising rate environment, at least on the equity side. Yeah. Look, boring can be good, right, Steve? Boring, boring can sure. make you money. Thanks for the, uh, thanks yeah. for the deja vu. Takes, takes me back to the go-go 90s to think about 30 times uh, earnings. That, that's, that's good stuff. Steve, great to see you this morning. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take care, Maria.